Well, hello. Welcome to Drawing with Fire. I'm Valerie, your neighborhood pyrography artist. Join with hubby. Hubcap. And for our babies. And today... Woof. Today, what? Woof. Oh, woof. <laughs> and today we are working on smooth, dark backgrounds. So let me know how this looks on screen. I thought we would try darkening up the room so that this stands out better. So if it's too dark, please let me know and we will get that fixed. All right. So I need to figure out what pen I want to start with because a lot of times I start off with the 18 large and that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Had to think about that but we are starting at a lower temperature and there's a very big reason for this. We are starting at a lower temperature because if we go hot immediately we charcoal the wood versus getting a nice smooth background so I'm going to start at four because it is a thicker pen as in thicker tip so we're going to start with that as that's heating up hey Sonia hey Sheila hey Michelle hey monkey gotta find out who monkey is it's one of our members but oh did they change your name yeah is that did we have monkey last week no I don't think so huh okay they'll surprise us so oh you're seeing it look like this. There's a reason. I spent, it was less than five hours, I spent putting in the hair and blocking in the clothes. They are not at the desired heat or tone level that they're going to be when they're finished. They're just blocked in so I can move on. Although I didn't get the shadows on his forehead and on the right side of his face. But I was really focused on trying to get the clothes in so that we had a, a, a better view at what we're doing. Uh, hey, Omar, Cynthia. Dario Rodus Ochoa says hola, Wanda, and Cynthia. Hey, Wanda. Hey, Omar. Hola. Alrighty. So I flipped him over because I have figured out, doing all of this burning thus far, that the wood is liking it better if I burn in this direction versus the other direction. So you flipped Edgar Allan Poe? On his, on his head. head. On How his head. disrespectful. On his head. Classical author. But that's what he did to the world. It. That's what he did to well, the world. Well, if he did that to the world, then, then he should be right side up now. All right. So we are starting over here on the edge. Let me zoom you guys in. Hopefully the color of the wood. There we go. It's not looking too bad. Get the camera out of my face. I am going to have to angle this up so the camera needs to go back in my face. So is this too dark for you guys? There is going to be another set of lights going up, so it's going to be brighter. But I, when the grandbabies came to visit, I don't know if any if you guys have watched the Oblivious series that, that Hubcap did for school. Anyway. It's art film at its worst. <laughs> it is awesome. Anyway, granddaughter loves Pop Pops videos so every time she comes she wants to watch pop pop so we put it on and then she saw that i had last year started the burning with them and so she saw her face and she wanted to see it so i went ahead and put that on but it was really washed out really bright so i'm trying to stop that so right now I, go ahead spence is here Hey, Spence. And, uh, Monkey says apparently my grandson changed the YouTube chat name, but we still don't know who you really are. So Tell us who you were. Is that Kathy? Oh. No, it's not Kathy. I don't know. It's Monkey. It's Monkey. I mean, they're a toasty. It's not Wanda. He's in. Yeah. So right now I'm using the top half of the tip. I'm doing oval strokes. I'm going right up against his jacket, but I'm at four. This is going to have to go darker for a dark background, but I'm going to have to do this in layers. I wonder if it's Burl. So right now I'm just getting right up against this jacket, and as I do that, we'll see the highlight that's along his shoulder. Now again, the jacket needs to go a little darker. I just wanted to have it in, so as we were burning, we could see it start coming forward. For this burning, it didn't 
absolutely need a dark background but I chose to go ahead and do it because I have his wife in the background of the top left corner in her painted version it, it's her um, funeral painting that her friend who cared for her uh, did in watercolors and it's the only known photo of her of any kind. Wow, that's a watercolor? Yes, but I went into Photoshop and I really muted it back and blurred it out because she's not the main part of this piece. She's just looking over his shoulder and again that's because of the poem Annabelle Lee that I believe that he wrote for his wife. And since that's the basis of why I am burning him, I wanted to include her in some way. But I do not want her to be in your face obvious. So I'm going to have to, I, I've been thinking really hard on how I want to approach the burning part of her with this dark background. She's going to be dark. But I'm trying to figure out the best way to do it. Because we're doing this in layers. So what I mean by this is we're going to do this tone right here for the background. But then I need to switch pins. And I will probably switch over to the large spoon shader to go. And this is the same thing I did for his clothes, his dark clothes. The spoon shader I have found when I'm doing something really dark. I can use the spoon shaders to not only darken but smooth out because they get in between the grain and it brings it all together. So that's why I do it that way now. I don't like when there's the harsh hot burn for a dark background. If you do then by all means go for it. I know this takes more time but for the kind of background I want, I'm willing to put in that time. And it's the easiest way to get a smooth background. What, um, I'm just curious, why wouldn't you use like a torch? I'm not using the torch because it gives off a different color. The same thing with a heat gun? Same with the heat gun. Ah. It is more of a black versus it kind of grays it out. It, it? kind of grays it out. And for some people, for some pieces, it is totally worth doing. But even with a torch, I don't use the flame part of it. I use the heat part, the hot air, so that I don't get those burnout areas where the grain burns differently. So I have actually, if and when I use it, I use it just the hot air. But another, re uh, you, once I put in a layer or two of the background, I can go back in with the heat gun to darken. And that's okay. But when it's the first layer, it, it, it's a different tone than what I want. I can use it to even out if I want to. But it's also harder to control without masking because I don't want to darken certain areas of him up like that. So I'm trying to get right up next to it and I notice this is darker than this side and for now that's okay but I have to make sure I darken right up against him or I will have a halo. And for this particular piece I don't want a halo. So if you want a dark background you can also do a gradient where it's lighter because your subject is darker go lighter around the subject and then move out darker that is totally a cool background as well but not what I'm wanting for him I'm wanting dark and moody so that well, the, I think dark and moody is probably the best choice for him for him yeah because of what he's associated with it's kind of his thing it's kind of his thing now I could totally go I could have totally gone with no background at all because there is so much darks 
between his hair and his cravat his scarf right here although looking at the reference it looks darker on screen but the cravat is definitely a tone like at least one step tone lighter than the lapels of his vest mm. but I, at that point I think it's more of a artistic choice now I don't want a harsh line up against this jacket either and because I'm going at it at a lower heat it's easier for me to make sure that line goes away it's gonna happen because the hottest part of the tip is right up against his collar and so it's going to give a line but I can fade that out later. So instead of outlining him, I'll go around him first in different angles, moving my pen in different angles. That way I can get up against stuff and blend it out. And now, or again, this is all gonna darken, but we're starting to see him pop out which is what we want the cravat right here is really dark so I'm gonna have to make a choice as I'm darkening this of what I want to be the darkest we have a good shadow up along this cravat I don't necessarily want to lose it so I'm gonna have to make some artistic choices and I'm intentionally lifting my pen because I am at a lower heat. Uh, the wood will pull the heat. What are you doing? More so. And so it'll start burning lighter, so I have to lift to let it re what are you doing? establish that heat. Right up against there, I can go over the hair. But it's definitely going to need to go darker. And when I touch down, I touch down in an area I have already burned because it's going to react less to the heat right up against it and now we can really see that white collar start to pop out there is a little bit of white on there we did it with the white charcoal but I've already erased over it twice so most of it has been pulled and I'll flip him in here in a second so we can look at it better and because I'm not burning at a high high heat I can go over this jacket and get that shadow a bit more I'm not having to stop and keep cleaning my pen either again I know it takes more time to spin and do layers but <clears throat> once done it it looks really good it really does pull it off better alright so yeah, I am always impressed and amazed by how you are able to get a uniform value in appearance out of your out of your um, when you do, when you're doing burning it's such a difficult thing to do as I do it right here I get a hot spot heat spot which I don't have to s stress about right now yeah but I mean but it looks so smooth and I have seen other you know people who do pyrography and they they go like super dark black and which I've done it it does go faster but um, when you're looking at the the burning at different angles, it has that mm -hmm. charred look, and sometimes because it uh, the nature of the char, it can be reflective in odd places. And if, I guess if you're going for that look, fine. But to me, it looks like the same effect as like you know when you're a kid when you use crayons and you're like, oh, I'm going to color in the background. And so you know you, you fill in a background of something, or you're you're trying to fill something in. But you can see the strokes, right? So it's not uniform. 
and that's the impression that I get like or when you use markers and it just you can see the the nib marks and so yeah going dark super fast like it's quicker but um, aesthetically it's it's not as it's, it's not nearly as refined so I'm trying to get right up against his coat so we can back out you certainly have more patience than I do. I can feel a difference in how I've got the wood and how it's reacting to the heat, or the tip, I should say. I still don't know who Monkey is. Maybe Monkey is going to make a mystery out of it. I feel like they are. Then if that's the case, I, I, I'm still going to go with Burl. Well, I, I looked at the YouTube profile, and mm. it just, there's a, a YouTube, I uh, didn't watch it, but um, there's a YouTube short that I couldn't see, and then there's oh. a video made, I think, 13 days ago. And not burrow. And it's of a, of a kid, maybe, I don't know, eight to, you know, young kid with yeah. glasses, and... Uh, I don't, I don't know. Hmm. The mystery continues. Yeah. All right. Who are you, monkey? Who are you? <coughs> Let's see that goes up. Think, Hubcap. Think. What is this mystery? I'm trying to make sure I get the shape right here. I can start messing around my phone, and if I do that, and monkey starts getting on me, we know it's Burl. Oh, no. I'm going to my phone. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Mm, this is interesting. Excuse Luckily, Burl's not here to to correct me or to call it out. I can just scroll all I want. There are little hot spots. I'm not worried about them because when I go to blend, they'll disappear. I'm trying to make sure this line right. go up against this collar we'll also see this other side of his face come out and then I can erase that as well we've got a light highlight right here that's going to start popping out now Yeah, these hot spots, not going to worry about them. They will go away. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, I need a drink real quick. <coughs> Sorry about that. Let's see. I'm going to touch down in his hair because I've already burned there. Bring it down along his face, doing oval strokes and not dragging. Trying not to lose the graphite line so I can see. And since I'm more up on the tip, it's burning hotter than it was down here. This part matters the most because it shapes the face. I may go a bit loose that I can adjust. I can always reshape. Let's drag this out because we do have a shadow. And right now I'm up on the tip tip, which is why it's burning darker. I'm okay with that. I just have to really blend it out. This is this is also the difference of burning the wood ups versus upside down and right side up and how the wood likes to be burned. I know that sounds weird to say how the wood likes to be burned, but 
it's actually quite true and it's little minute things like that if you pay attention it will make a difference so now I got enough that I can pull out angle right if it feels a little off when you're burning just shift your pen and or your angle a little bit and you'll feel a difference it may take some practice because maybe um, maybe you're less connected or maybe you don't uh, receive information in that way doesn't make you wrong you just have to find what works better for you but I can feel a difference and when I feel that difference I can also see a difference see how this is burning smoother now that I'm upside down I'm, I'm tilted just a hair more to the left leg of it and it's accepting the burn better easier smoother and that's the wood I know it sounds hippy dippy, hippy dippy for me to say that's the way communicating with you, but it very much does. And now that I burn that area, let's see if it'll take it a little bit better. And here in a second, we're going to pull out the camera so we can see. If he's starting to pop out. Again, I know that's dark it's gonna go darker than that so I'm not worried about it in fact I can burn a little bit more of that and look at that we can now really see his shoulders the shape of his face so much clearer now you don't have to use the 18 for this if you like the 2b or the 4b Optima go for it use that one if you like that one better I prefer to use the 18 large angle it's light but boom and that is not how dark it's gonna go but I do need oop, sorry about that to get in around his hair so we can discuss that let's see here we liked it better upside down I could try right side up on this side and see it could be upside down on one side and right side up on another because what is a natural sub substance and it grows differently just like we do yeah see I can feel a difference I have to watch how I angle I have to go a little quicker, angle the pin more, so we shall go back to upside down. And I'm just going over the hair because even where there's the light spots of the hair, those are still darker. He doesn't have any bright highlights in his hair. And he also has gaps in the hair where the background shows through more. Sven says it's looking kind of 3D. Oh, thank you. Thank you. He says cool. That is what I'm going for when I burn realistic. I want it to... That's what I'm trying to achieve. Now, I'm the first to tell you I don't always achieve it. But that is what I'm going for. Alright darker in here a bit I'm still trying to figure out how I'm gonna lay her in because she is gonna go darker and she is dark like where her eye the uh, indent in her eye her eyebrow all of that that is dark already So I'm just going to go over the hair. <clears throat> now if he had light hair, I would have to be more careful. But I would still go over the hair for my
base layer because we can see how light it's burning. And that is probably just because of how I've got the board upside down. And again, I've got more pressure going just slightly on the right leg of the tip. Because I'm right-handed, if you're left-handed, you may do it the opposite. Let's see, get in here. Yeah, let's, see. let's try it this way. Because this does need to go darker. Let's see how the tip responds. See, the bottom of her face is right here, but I have it in a pretty good shadow. So I need to keep that in mind. And now I'm at the top of the tip. It's kind of hard to visualize. So right now, when it's burning a little darker, I'm using... Yeah, do this way I'm not shaking because I'm holding something hot. I'm using like this part of the tip, so above the knife. There we go. And then I may angle it a little bit more on the on the right. Touch down where it's dark. But that's how I'm holding my pen up against the wood. Let's get this darker. The doggies are very calm today. Maybe because it's dark. Maybe. They're like night night time for doggy. They like birds. <laughs> Gotta keep that in mind. All right. So I've got to figure out right here is where her head starts, and I can leave a little bit of light. So it looks like the hair is got a highlight on the top of the strand. See, I've got it, the board turned this way and is burning slightly different. And go right up against that so I can get that little bit of highlight. Alright, I don't want a harsh line where I'm burning up to her mouth. I don't want it harsh because I intentionally blurred it because she's meant to be more ghost-like. And again, she is not the main subject. And that's what I was talking about trying to figure out the best way to burn her is because all this is meant to be blurry. So I'm going to go lighter. So I have a little bit more wiggle room. You may not be doing this for any of your burning, but it's not bad information to have. So, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a little gap. That way I have room to blend. It gives me a little bit of room. That gap will not stay. The gap is just there. So I have room to darken and blend. May sound a bit ink a bit off. But I need that room. One, so I feel more comfortable in doing what I'm doing. And two, just so I can blend. When I erase the line, I'll be able to pull these two together. So her, her head goes up. Just so I know where things are at. Let's we'll put her in as fast as I can. 
I'm going to stick with this pin for now. So the top part of her lip is dark. And this time I did print out my reference. Mm -hmm. I know they can't see it. I just realized that. Yeah. I should have it where I can just pop it in. Her nose, all this is dark. I'll touch down. Dark area. That's lighter part of her nose. And I want this to be blurry. I don't want any major details. So right now I'm just blocking in the dark. It's going to look off. It's going to look horrible. For a minute. Let's see here. We'll get her eye. Her eye is the most focused in. And when I'm reaching off, I'm just pulling the heat as I'm looking at my reference. I'm just pulling the heat from my pen. Let's see. That is where it's at. I can touch down where I know her eyebrow is. Just pull some more heat and then right up against the lid. If I keep the tonal values right, and don't put in, in any major details and then burn over it, it should remain looking blurry. That is my thought. I have not done this before. So right here, it's a bit of a learning curve for all of us. Yeah, I mean, it's looking cool so far. Touch down where it's hot. Hottest right against her crease. Blend it out. I could do this with the extra small, but then I do kind of have to worry about it getting too dark. She's got some makeup underneath. Not looking for any of the details. Wish I could remember the woman's name who painted this. I'll have to look it up. So I'm gonna give her credit. So the darkest part of the shadow for the eye is here. And then it blends out. Let's see here, we really don't see her iris. I'm going to keep that loose. It's, I'm going to have to go in with a smaller pen. Now, light... Uh, hmm? He says the portrait is unsigned and the identity of the artist has not been firmly established. It was, they're saying it was her friend. Um, who cared for her. Yeah, it's her nurse. Yeah. This is Virginia, right? Yes. Okay, this is Marie Louise Shrew. That would be the, the artist. Okay. Ah, oh, shoot fire! What happened? I was looking down because I was looking up the information. And I appreciate that. You didn't do anything. I did not watch how I laid down my tip and I have it really dark I did it and it happens <laughs> so you guys just watched it live and watched me having to catch the um, naughty words <laughs> before they came out alright so let's think for a minute how am I going to fix this because that is pretty harsh but but not all is lost I'm going to
switch over to the medium spoon. I'm going to lower my temperature a half a setting. And I am going to blend it. And I'm going to do that now so that I'm, one, not kicking myself the whole time. I'm trying to do everything else and staring at it and not treating myself kindly. Let's be honest there. Oops, this happened. All right. Touch down an area already burned. Smaller strokes. It is going to have to go darker. But I'm going to blend it out. And I'm going to think to myself that this is not a bad thing. What this does, ultimately, is it's going to make me d burn darker. Where I might be a little nervous, and it happens to all of us, I'm going darker. At this point, it now requires me to go darker. And nobody looking at this outside of the live stream is going to know I oopsed. And even if they did, I don't care. I am not perfect. I screw up all the time, pretty much on every piece. At some point, there will be an oops. I didn't take into consideration how the grain was right here. And that's how that occurred. I wasn't paying attention. I could go with a larger spoon to help smooth this out more. But we'll stick with this for a minute. Well, if you ever wanted to see somebody light while live bite their tongue, <laughs> you just got it. Mm. Oops! But I got it. I am going to have to up the heat with blending out, but for now, we're okay. And I tend to step down, meaning I'll start with the large, and I probably should have, but I really wanted to get this fixed. And we can do that. Again, this is just going to make me, it's going to push me to burn it darker, which in my brain I know it needs to go darker, but it can be hard to do that. I'm switching over to the large. Just because I found with this piece of wood, it is smooth and good. Hey, baby. You just want loves. You just want loves. There you go. Give you some loves. All right. Luckily, these heat quickly. So we don't have to wait. Yeah, this is smoothing out better. And sometimes that happens. So let's blend it out. I'm going right up against where I went too dark. I have to darken around it. To blend it out. Smooth it out. Cynthia says it looks awesome. Thank you. I am not ha hating Edgar. I, 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 I don't say that often. You guys don't hear that often. But in this case... What an overwhelmingly positive statement. I It is. I'm not hating it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm actually overall pretty happy with him thus far. I feel, yeah, that's nicer. <laughs> that's right. nicer. Let's get that shadow in for her. It's like if you made dinner for somebody and they're like, hmm, I don't hate it. You mean like apricot chicken? That was over a decade ago. It happened once. And it was still a good meal. <sighs> Alright. Not looking as harsh. Let's get some blurriness in here. I need to leave 
lighter areas in order when I darken over all. Has Wanda been in already? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Wanda was in under her name, or we would have guessed Monkey as her. Gotcha. I was just curious. Alright, let's darken this side up. Because uh, David Greenway is here. Hey, David. He says, hi, all. Thanks for the live stream. Ah, well, thank you for joining us. We are glad you're here. This is a little darker. All right. Let's get that in. This is the darkest part of the eyebrow. So I need to get the hint of the rest of the eyebrow. I can still go back and darken. I'm just... There we go. Let's see here. This is the other side of her head right here. I'll put that in real quick so I don't lose it. And I know it may be hard to see, but I have dots. And that's how I know where the shadows are. Sometimes I do them a little too light. So my pen is just shy of four. It is running smoother on the wood. So I may stick with this one for the dark background. I will probably have to up the heat a little bit to get the same tonal value as what I've already been doing. Alright, so we got a shadow that comes over her eyebrow. We're going to get that in there. Again, I want her really... She's just in the background. Almost more of a he knows she's there and we can see a glimpse of her. But we're not sure what we're glimpsing. That's what I would like to go for. Wanda says, yeah, I didn't come in as grandmother this time. So not... They're just having fun not telling us. Yeah, I've, this given, point. I've given up. Alright, let's bring the shadow down for the cheek. Now, f where her face stops in his hair is actually pretty... Layla, stop. Pretty obscure. Um, can't really see it. I can just put it in like that. And it implies that it's there. That's got an area. It is Burl. Burl. I told you she was enjoying herself. Being anonymous. I told you. Alright. Always causing trouble. Oh, Burl. So within the eye, it's already dark. And, uh, see, I can get more blurry with this tip. So that's what I'm trying to do. Dark right there. We don't really see her eye. I can just do a hint. And then it is lighter. Under her eye. Let's see if this comes in more. This is all going to darken up. I've got a pretty dark line there. Let's bring it in. Let's shape it. Looks like he's got some crazy uh, eyeshadow going. So I need to fix that. I'm sure the whole thing is going to darken up. So It is. I'm going to have to go like over the whole thing with... Oops. Layla. The hair comes up. This is all dark. Yeah, she's addicted to looking metal. <sighs> I don't know. Let's darken this up. Yeah, I'm, I've got to really visualize how I'm going to do this. So we get the lip. So we'll get the lip in. Just so I don't lose it. I'm intentionally moving quick and a bit lighter. Got chin there. Look. 
comes out a little bit with her kinnon and then we'll start looking at and all this is shaded and then we can start looking at how I can make her a ghost this in here I guess that this is her um, funeral portrait this is 18 uh, I believe so don't quote me on it I believe it's 1839 back when they did photos and paintings of their deceased loved ones it may not be something that we do now but they did back then You've asked me, they're really pretty. So I was reading about this, and for the longest time, right. the surviving pose did not want it reproduced because I guess that because it was of their mo mother or in death. Yeah. That there was some things there that were in the painting that were specific to that. I guess that she looked a little different when she was Yes, alive. she did. She and did. They, so they, they felt that it was like a not the best representation of her. I do remember reading that. But eventually they caved in and said, okay, you can reproduce it. And there is a, some reproductions and derivative works made from it. And I, I looked at them and... Yeah, I, I don't like them. None of them were as good. No. They were not, didn't look as, as realistic or... Um, just weren't as good. Yeah, I tried really hard to find the original because I didn't like. There was one pencil drawing of of her, but apparently that was attributed a, a to Poe. But then it was found out that it was a forgery that yeah. some guy uh, overseas was yes. doing to to you know make money off of it. So there's a sketch of her but it's disputed that it's not accurate and it's also a forgery yeah I, I tried real hard to just I figured if this is truly the the painting her friend did then it was done with love and accuracy as close as she could and so I was more interested in that yeah. all right and there is some uh, I saw that there is some disagreement on who actually did the painting and so there, I think that there was critics at the time saying that the work was too skillful for an amateur. Which is it nice. There's plenty of amateurs and that do beautiful work. Yeah, and, and that they said, well, they must have brought in somebody, like a prominent artist from New York. But the thing is, is they didn't have the money. The pose were poor. Yep. So it's to me, it's much more likely that, you know, that her friend um, really did the the piece and just, you know. It was just people who were like, well, she's an amateur. She couldn't possibly do that work. Um, it's up the heat. I'm going to go four and a half. Let's see what happens. So. Yeah, I, I I, didn't like how they talked about her friend and that she wasn't good enough to do. Yeah, I didn't either. That resonates, resonates with me as an artist because, you know, I've... I've <laughs> okay, let me... Can I tell a story? Uh, I'm fine with you telling the story. Right. I'm crossing over the graphite line to start blending. I may have to go back to the 18 large, I think I will, <clears throat> to make sure the strokes are the same. And then go back over it with the um, spoon shader. So I'm at four. Now go ahead, please. Okay. Sorry. So I've been an artist most of my life. You know, amateur, and then you know, getting better and better as I've gotten older. Um, when I was in the army, I had enough artistic ability that nearly every time that the unit would find out, and the units that I was stationed in, that I was an artist, I would get, we'll say, commissioned, air quotes, mm -hmm. but really, you know, like, hey, you're going to do this because you're an artist, and we want you to do it. So, I'm doing all kinds of projects, and um, so. We were out in um, Iraq, and one of the bases that we were on, the battalion that I was at, word filtered down that I was an artist, and they're like, okay, we want you to 
um, we want you to do some things for us. And so my chain of command was like, all right, well, you know, we're going to loan you to this other unit and you can do that, which I didn't care because, you know, if I'm painting, you know, not then I'm not doing other things. Yeah. And, and generally I'm inside and it's cool because like I had to paint their conference room and they, being a battalion, you know, we're out in Iraq, they actually had AC. So that was, that was pretty enjoyable. But I also got, uh, um, tasked with painting this big sign with their unit crest on it in front of the chow hall because there was a bunch of these signs out um, you know in units that were stationed there they would put up this thing and then their unit crest or the unit patch would be there and maybe they'd have like some words under it with their motto or whatever and so that way that when their soldiers went to the chow hall on you know on the fob that you know that they could say, hey, that's my unit, and, you know, have some pride. So I had to paint this thing, and I was outside um, doing this. And, you know, so I was up there probably for about six hours, and, you know, it's a rack, so it's hot. And so I'm out there um, painting this thing, and, and uh, I was just far enough from, the, from the, where everybody was coming in that I could hear people's conversations. And sometimes... You know, I'd, I'd hear things like, oh, wow, that's cool. Ah, I guess some unit's getting their stuff painted. And um, I was a staff sergeant at the time. And, um, you know, and so uh, it was. it's kind of unusual because a lot of times staff sergeants, they don't get tasked with stuff like this because they're considered to be a little bit higher up and therefore don't, you know, Essential. don't get, don't get uh, these kind of things, you know, pushed on us but you know I did I didn't care um, so I'm out there painting and I hear these two people come up and they stop right it's two other soldiers and they're like wow that's cool um, and and they're like wow that's pretty cool and then because uh, I, I didn't have my jacket on because it was hot and I, um, I I did have my hat on but I was turned away and so uh, they couldn't see my rank. There you go. I was going to tell you. Yeah. Tell them why. And so they're they're like, uh, one of the guys goes, "Is that a, is that a staff sergeant painting that?" And the other one goes, he pauses for a second. He's going, "Nah, it's just some dirtbag specialist." And then they they walked off and left. Anyway, it just kind of reminded me of of uh, sort of a reverse of what we were talking about. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, where they thought I might be, you know, something, but but then they're like, nah, he's not. All right, so we got a bit of mess going on here. Totally fine, because I'm thinking I can show you how it's going to blend out. I'm just trying to get enough in, so we can blend it out. Hey, Burl. <laughs> Did you change your name? I think yeah. so. Or she's going uh, under a different but, account, her regular account. But no? it didn't I think she's on a different account because no. Mon Monkey is still in the chat. Then why do you think it was Burl? Because when I go to that profile, it says at Burl Mo Moseko. Oh, it's Burl. It's Burl. She just switched the she's name. Just trying to, she's still trying to be cryptic and mysterious. Your cover is blown, Burl. <laughs> we can see that it's burning slightly different because I flipped the board. You're not late. You've been here all along. We know it. <laughs> Nice try. Monkey. Nice try. Monkey. We know it's you. Alright. So let's get this in here. I'm intentionally letting it burn hotter. <clears throat> I can also slow down the pen. Um. Because this is a bigger tip, I can do bigger strokes to fill in. Okay. It's definitely going to make more sense when the whole background's in. Yeah. Right now she kind of looks like she has a beard. She does. She does. Let's see here. The darkest part. Andrea? Hey, Andrea. Here. She says she lost track of time. Oh, that happens. Yeah, that's okay. Alright, let's get this in here. I don't want her to have a double chin that's not there. This is the bottom of the chin. And she's got because it's all blurry because I blurred it. 
I gotta watch out about not putting any defined strokes. And right here, I'm letting it be a mess because I'm gonna switch over real quick to show you how I'm gonna fix it so it's not. Layla. What's she doing? Wandering. Oh, it's getting close to the end, so uh, she's getting antsy. We, we've been going for 54 minutes. Okay, so let me switch over. Yeah, this is definitely burning better upside down on this side of the wood. I am trying to watch because we got a grain that's going right there. So I am trying to watch. See, and I, and I think that that's uh, something that's so important that I don't know if other pyrographers talk about it. I know you do. But, like, you know, as a painter, you know, if you prepare your surface, you don't really doesn't really interfere too much with what you're doing. In fact, you can use it to your benefit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and even if you don't prep it, you know, it's a uniform, generally a uniform surface. You know, you don't have to worry about irregularities, you know, because it doesn't matter. You know, you just have the canvas or you're using prepared paper or something. So the whole thing is going to pretty much react the same way to your paint. But when you are doing pyrography, you have to be prepared to anticipate and also react to how the grain, which is a, a random but natural element, how the, the grain yep. interacts with how you execute your work. And I feel like that's such an important thing to talk about because, you know, um, in the past, it's been a long time, when I was doing some pyrography alongside of you, you know, my work, not so good. Um, but I know that many times that I had problems where the grain would interfere with what I was trying to do. Either physically, like I would get caught up on the grain, or like um, just visually, like it would interfere with, you know, what I was trying to do with, with the pyrography. So... All right, a little big. I'm trying to pop up the photo, the reference I created, so you guys have a better idea. See, that's cool. That's going to look really cool when it, when it gets done, I think. Put it over there. So that's what I'm going for. In fact, she could still go a little darker. But I've got to get her in first. There we go. We'll just plant that there. So, blending real quick. I've bumped up to four and a half with the large spoon shader just so I can show how I would blend how I will be blending out go around the hot spots trying to bring them together I'm more up on this tip not using so much of the bowl of the tip. And I say bowl because it's a spoon shader. It is made differently than the other spoons. Mm. So it's it's I'm trying it's more to, like a ball tip, huh? It's like, like almost like a half ball tip. I could use a ball tip instead of a spoon. If I didn't have a spoon, I could also use the uh, extra large ball tip to do the same thing. So I feel like that this 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 tip though gives you the benefits and the coverage yes. of, of the ball without having to generate so much heat yes. into the ball. Yes. The ball absorbs a lot of it. Yep. So that's kind of a nice that's actually sort of well, I wouldn't say it's superior to the ball because with the ball tip Well you, you only get so big. You can hold the pin any which way you need to and you're always gonna have the same surface because it's a sphere mm -hmm. so if you needed to you know hold your hand a different way you could um, but I guess like technically from an effect standpoint this this pin is probably superior in a way because well it depends on what you want to do well, I mean, it truly really does you're not having to push so much uh, power through it to generate the same amounts of, he yes. of heat and it's got a nice surface that is um, condu conducive for shading. I am rocking back to more of the ball, 
ball part of it to go lighter and moving quicker. Yeah. But where I, when I want to darken, I got to get around this line that I have right here. Follow it above it and below it. You may have to use a smaller tip to blend that out. And I'll show the extra large ball tip here in a second. But see, it's starting to smooth out. I may have to do another layer. And actually, in doing another layer, I can actually lower my heat, do the same stroke that I'm doing with lower heat, and it kind of, in a way, irons the wood, so it smooths the grain. Now doesn't that make it harder to burn on, though? No. Really? No. In fact, it'll run this, depending on the tips. I guess, so you're not burnishing it, then? No, not trying to fully burnish. Uh, okay. Because burnishing, the, yes, burnishing does affect. So how do you end up burnishing then? Because I'm confused about that. So like, what, what, what keeps you from burnishing this right now? What would, what would cause burnishing? Is the question. One, if I went in with too much heat. Okay. That will burnish the wood. Um. Just pressure. Going over it too much with pressure. With pressure. Okay. So then, in that case, you really are ironing the wood. Yep. Right. And then that's what caused that burnishing effect. And then, so if it's burnished, that's going to be harder to burn on. But you're yes. burning so lightly that you're just. Okay. I guess I understand. But I'm not, I'm not a pyro pyrographer like you, Toasties. So it still seems a little confusing to me. So I will probably go over this at least from this tone, probably once more. Again, look at the smooth gradient. How does she do it? Patience and spending time and deep breaths and going over and over and over. Ah. Well, you know, I feel like that if you're here watching this, that you probably possess those qualities. No, I don't even possess. I, I, I really do. You don't, but then you execute. Because in my head, in my head, I'm like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I'm having to really hold myself back from and reminding myself I know what the end result's going to be. I know it's the way I'm going to want it, so I have no choice. Oh, Get hello. So I have no choice but to slow down. Or the perfectionist. Per hello. She's perfection. Like, mom. mom. Are, are, am I done? Is it's, that what you're telling me? It's been an hour, Mom. It's Ooh. funny, they are Ooh. so good at time. She stretched for a reason and not a nice one. I thought it was her breath. It's That's not. It's so right here. I'm not smelling anything. Then maybe it was her breath. And going with the grain. Smaller strokes. And trying to be careful because I haven't burned other areas. Oh, I said I was going to bring out the extra large ball. All right, we can do that here. But I need this. This part is dark, if not darker than that. All right, real quick. With the extra large, which is this size, and in comparison for the small spoon shader, they're about the same. But this requires less heat than this. Because there's less metal. Switch over. I should be able to stay at four and a half. Get a drink. And we're just darkening over here. I do like this tip. Pat doesn't like it as much, but I do. Which tip is that? It's the extra large. And yes, my board is bending it's going to bend oh it's warping because of the heat yeah because the heat's all in the middle when i frame it it will frame straight you know we could probably get like a groove dowel that you could slip a oh, along the burning edges. in and that would keep it from warping if you really wanted it i'm not really worried about it okay i mean it makes it harder for take pictures and what have you i bumped up to six so i can go back down to four and a half just to speed up the heating 
this tip probably it is it takes the longest to heat up because there is so much metal here all right against so I'm at four and a half and it's burning darker than the large spoon again I, I am just I am really really impressed with the with the uniformity and the smoothness to, of those um, of your of your backgrounds for anything blended oval stroke is oval the way stroke. to go okay. I love that again this kind of goes back to starting off with graphite and colored pencil first yeah so the so an oval stroke is you trying to get the pigment or graphite within the tooth of the paper and it just carried over that's interesting when, I, when I'm doing airbrush um, I sometimes do an oval stroke but but figure eights are more common mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're doing faces because it adds a little bit of skin like texture if you're doing figure eights so I think it's, it's interesting like where I as I would instinctively do figure eights you're doing ovals but it's true though because when I do graphite or if I'm doing charcoal I will tend to do like ovals so yeah I think that's probably universally probably the most efficient way to do it yeah let's come back over here because I can use it the same way I was using the spoon god but if you're using graphite you can smear it out you know yeah I know. and uh, you just can't do that with with pyrography no we got to spend the time I feel like that if you are um, if you're a pyrographer like your parallel disciplines that you could probably also excel in or would be like pen and ink mm. or um, graphite ta tattoo well graphite too I thought about getting a tattoo machine just trying it but I don't know that there's a reason to spend the money to me you know I, to me tattoos harder because my wood ain't screaming at me and trying to move off yeah most of the time. Most, most of the time. Well, yeah. Sometimes it tries to jump in off my easel. Okay. I, I was like, it screams at you? Yeah. We well, have to talk. I think that's, I like the spoon better. That's some scary, that's scary stuff. Switch back over to the large spoon. Yeah, I, people have, have, you know, they're like, oh, you should do tattoos. I've never had the desire. Because, like you said, you oh, know, I'd like to try you're dealing it. with a living canvas. Mm -hmm. Like, I, there's so much there. Like, you have to deal with, you know, prep. You have to deal with their pain. Well, their, I, we their still have to do level. prep. And then also their personal hygiene. Like, you know. Cause Wood you, always smells good to me, so. All right, well, pe not all people smell good to me. <laughs> this is true. I mean, if, you're, if you're trying to do a tattoo on some big dude who's been eating hamburgers for all of his life, it's like, <laughs> it's not, it's not. Can we not It's not a place I want to go. But you just went there. I kind of want a hamburger now. You're wrong. I'm not wrong. All I'm right. just hungry for lunch. I actually am going to bump up to five just so we go a little quicker. Touch down in an area I've already burned. I don't know how much longer, Roxy. Let's bring it on down. I try to move my tip before touching down on the wood just so I can already have the stroke going and again to touch down an area these are all micro movements that I don't know how well camera picks them up which is why I try to point them out at some point spending the time with your wood burner makes all the difference well hello hello are you, are you trying to tell me you're hungry for lunch? Is that what you're doing? She said yeah. Are you going to say hi to everybody? No. No. Okay. So I'm following the grain. Doing those oval strokes. If I get a heat spot, I try to burn around it. And it's the same for whether I'm doing it on the face or the dark background. Try to burn around it to darken the area around the hot spot one to camouflage it and two well mainly camouflage it if I camouflage that hot spot by burning around it and not 
as much burning over it burning over it will darken that and then you got to go around around the spot darker and you just keep going back and forth that way you'll be so frustrated get this I'm trying to get this connected this will be framed and it ha and a quarter inch on all sides will be under the frame but I still want it neat I will spend more time Hello. through the week getting this all blocked in because next week will be the last public live on this one and we're going to do details and darkening and adjusting that way we will have finished the portrait from beginning to end I know we go into February but you know what that's okay I think I'm doing pretty good if I can get it done in six video six lives like all the information just going around spend that time I am gonna have to wear my brace after my wrist is hurting I am horrible about putting more pressure on my tip than I really need to especially in burning dark and then I hurt after alright so I just have to I will jump around because if I spend too much time just going in a uniform way I start like getting all comfy when I fall asleep so I need to jump around to keep that from happening see I just start off with an oval and just keep making it bigger I might kind of switch up and go in a different direction so that it's not uniform when I'm doing oval strokes this is what it looks like going back over it and here I said this needed to blend, blend it out I need to work to get closer to his face Ooh, that burned hot so now all this needs to go at least that See, this side of the wood is burning differently. Guess how it goes. Right up against it. Blend it out. <coughs> no, we ain't doing this. All right. Do we have any questions on dark background? The pins I prefer is the large 18 spear shader. Girls. And then. No. The spoon shaders, of which I will start with the large. When I go to dark in the next round, I will do it with the medium. And then if I need to go back over it to darken some more, I will do that with the small. I know that's really tedious. That's how I get a smooth background. With an even tone. And no charcoal or overburning of the wood. Just gotta keep going back over it. And we can see this side's burning darker than the other side. I'm gonna have to take the dogs out. Yeah. Alrighty. So if we don't have any more questions. Ah, let's put this down. My hand is hurting. He's really starting to pop off the wood now. And overall I am not hating him. And actually being feeling more proud of this piece. Let's do this so the light isn't oh, I made it come on. There we go. I'm what are you doing, Chad? Are you okay? She, she's going to go. Alrighty. So if we don't have any more questions, <coughs> say it with me. Oh, and if you're new and watching either live on a, or a replay, don't forget to hit subscribe. Click the like button and click all notifications because Facebook 
has been a real pain on telling people, even when I tag everyone, one post didn't go out for 10 days. So if you want to keep going, and after we're done with Poe, it's going to be a month of members only lives, and then we can decide what we're going to do from that. Alrighty. Sonya is off to try her, get her background smooth. Yay! Let's see here. Do I listen to music while I burn? Absolutely. I will go from heavy metal, of which I actually do have my playlist for, um, yes, you, you can see them on YouTube. You can go, click on playlists and you can, one, you'll see my burning videos, but you'll also see my music playlist that I play. Um, um, heavy metal, strong women is one of the playlists. One, of, one is wood burning, one is 80s, one is Zeppelin only. So yeah, I, I sometimes I listen to a book, but most times it is music. And do I find myself burning along to the beat of the music, especially with a dark background? Oh yes. <laughs> oh yes, I'll find I'm like, do, 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 you know, whatever the, the beat is. I'm kind of moving along to it and then I think it's funny but I guess you guys wouldn't have seen that or they do or Wanda saying they're duplicating the posts Ugh. Facebook don't like me great music <laughs> yep <coughs> really really if you like heavy metal women there's a band called Dorothy I love her voice and there is Pretty Reckless. Pretty Reckless, the lead singer of Pretty Reckless, is the little girl from the Grinch movie. It's her. And she has a beautiful, wonderful voice, too. So if you like strong women singing metal and rock, I would definitely check out Dorothy and Pretty Reckless. But you can see that in the playlist. Um, it's labeled specifically Strong Women, if you want to go through that. And see what I listen to. And listen to it yourself. Alrighty. You know what to say with me. Let's pop it right up there. You're awesome. You can do this. Why? Because you're a pyro artist. Next week, we're going to get him all balanced out. See you then. Bye. It's weird not having Hubcap with me saying bye. <laughs>